this exam will explain to you how to navigate your way through the regulations section of your gas book. This is important because there are two regulations examinations on the ACS and the City and Guilds course. So let's open this by saying that regulations themselves are just a very short and quick version of the rest of your gas book. So the regulations will make a statement and then the rest of your gas book with the pictures and the other stuff is just explaining that particular regulation. So in effect, the regulation section is a mini version of your big gas book. You also need to know that there are things called definitions. They're very important. They are contained at the beginning of the regulation section. And if you know that they're there, it will really help you out in answering the questions. So what is a definition? Everything needs to be described. If I'm talking to you or you're talking to a manufacturer or you're talking to a supplier and you mention something, we all need to be talking about the same thing. So the words that we use within the gas industry have been given definitions to say, when you say such and such, it means so and so. Okay, that's what a definition is. It means that we're all talking about the same thing when we mention something. You don't have to learn all these definitions because they're contained within the regulations, but you must be aware that they're there because they'll really help you. Let's use an example. Within the definitions and within your guest learning, the word work is used a lot. Now there's a definition for work because what is work? Is it when you attend the property? Is that work? You just go to the door? If somebody asks you to polish the copper pipework in their house and not disturb anything else, is that considered work? Fitting a carbon monoxide alarm? Or disconnecting and reconnecting the bayonet fitting behind a cooker? Is that regarded as work? Because if you have carried out work, there's certain things you've got to do afterwards. Checking other appliances, the flues, etc, etc. So fortunately, Regulation 2, as I've said, contains your definitions, and it contains the definition of work. And that says that work includes activities with a gas fitting carried out by any person if they've been installing or reconnecting, maintaining, servicing, permanently adjusting, disconnecting, repairing, altering, renewing or purging. Or changing the position of a gas fitting. And it further goes on to say that work does not include the connection or disconnection of a bayonet fitting or other self-sealing connector. That makes sense because if someone has dropped something down behind the cooker and needs to pull the cooker forward when they're at home in their own house, they'll probably need to disconnect the bayonet fitting to move the cooker out and either clean underneath it or pick up whatever's dropped. They can then reconnect it. They don't have to be gas trained and that is not considered to be work. If you do that in someone's house, you don't then have to go and carry out all the other appliance tests that would have to be carried out if you had done work.
So now that the definitions are out of the way, let's see what we can do about helping you to navigate regulations. Most of the people I know that failed their regulations exams failed because they didn't know how to find what it was they were being asked. Now there's a reasonably simple way and that is to remember that at the beginning of your regulation section in your guest book there's an index and you go down the index and you find the bit that most fits what you've been asked about. Now, occasionally, you'll get asked about a series of numbers. So, for example, here's an example question. In the cases where the requirements of Regulation 29 brackets 9 brackets C cannot be met, measuring the gas rate and or the operating pressure, another method of checking the appliance for correct operation must be employed. It's not really a question, that's, that's actually a, a regulation. So how do we find that regulation? If you get asked a question on regulation 26.9c. Well, the regs themselves are split into parts, A to G. We don't use these in our references. But that just helps you when you're reading through trying to find the right place to start looking. You then have 41 sections. Okay, and that's the first number. One of those sections will be the first number. The sections themselves are split into paragraphs. And the paragraphs are given a number. You know, one, two, three, blah, blah, blah. And then those paragraphs themselves are split into subparagraphs, which are given a letter. So 26 is a section, 9 is a paragraph, and C is a subparagraph. So let's see how this works in practice. We go to the index at the front of the regulation section and we find section 26, gas appliances, safety precautions. So now we've got to turn the pages, go through all the regulations until we get to part E, which contains section 26. Now we're going to have to find paragraph 9. So you look down, they're all numbered. There it is. And inside paragraph 9, underneath it there, are the subparagraphs which are lettered. And we're looking for C. And there, as simple as that, we found exactly what we're looking for. So how does that all relate to exam questions? Well, here's a typical exam question. No employer shall allow his employees to carry out work on a gas fitting unless that employee A has completed a course in health and safety, B has completed a course whereby his supervisor declares him fit to carry out gas work, C is a member of a class of persons approved for the time being by the health and safety executive, or D is a supervisor of gas engineers. Well, we go back to the index again and we look for something that looks like what we're looking for. And you'll find in part B, gas fittings, general provisions, a section saying qualification and supervision. So qualification, that sounds about right. That sounds what we're looking for. So that is section three. So we're going to go and have a look and see if section 3 contains anything that sounds like it should be an answer to that question. So under the qualifications and supervision, we just read down the paragraphs. And as we go down, 
No person shall carry out work, blah, 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 unless he's competent to do so, etc., etc. But when you get down to three, it says there, no person shall carry out such work unless the employer or self-employed person, as the case may be, is a member of a class of persons approved for the time being by the health and safety executive. That exactly matches one of your answers. Thank you very much for watching. This is part one. In part two, I'll go a little bit more in depth into the type of questions you're going to be asked.